Hi, this is David. Today I'm going to talk about bud vase arrangements. Uh, let's look at a few different styles of bud vases. Uh, bud vases were designed to do just that, hold a few buds or a few flowers. So they all have fairly narrow openings or necks as we like to call them. Uh, this is a bottle that I've removed the label and saved. Perfect uh, to be a bud vase. Uh, a very narrow opening. This is a more decorative one. Uh, has a fairly wide base, but again, the opening is fairly narrow. Uh, both of those would hold fewer flowers than this vase that has a wider opening. Uh, this is the one I'm going to use for demonstration. And the end result is about the same, but construction is just a little bit different. With the narrow neck vases, you want to put your flowers in first and then add any foliage or filler flowers. With the wider mouth uh, bud vase, you want to put your flower or your, excuse me, your foliage and filler in first, and they will help hold your flowers in place. So let's get started. Uh, I've chosen to use filler today. You don't always have to do that. I'm going to be using uh, some baby's breath. Uh, I picked my flowers up today from local grocery store. Uh, give that a little bit of a cut. Add that in. We don't want our flowers and foliage to be too tall because if they do, uh, it could look like the arrangement is going to fall over or it could actually fall over and I've seen that happen. So don't make them too tall. Uh, about twice the height of the container is fine. Uh, I think that's enough baby's breath. I'm going to add some Italian Ruscus or Poet's Laurel. Uh, put that in toward the back because bud vases are viewed uh, from one side. These are perfect to go on someone's desk, uh, on a bedside table in a hospital. Um, I put them on my windowsill in my kitchen lots of times. So just something that's going to be in a very small space uh, so you can appreciate those few buds. This is Japanese maple that I've clipped from the yard. It needed to have some lower limbs removed. So I cut those off and rather than putting them in the compost pile, I thought I'd use them in my bud vase. Notice the red stems. This variety is called Sangu Kaku and it is wonderful uh, for winter interest uh, in the garden. And I have that planted right outside the studio so when I'm looking out the window in the winter I can see those bright red stems. All right, you can see that's the front that you're looking at and now the back is fairly flat. Let's add some flowers. Uh, today we're going to be adding carnations. These are wonderful magenta with a little bit lighter tip on them. This is their natural color. Carnations come in so many different colors now. Um, I like using them because they last a long time. Tucking that in, uh, that's going to be our tallest one. And then we'll add a medium and a short. And I'm going to zigzag these through the arrangement uh, rather than putting them in a straight line. Get that one to squeeze in. I almost have too much filler in there. Um, to hold them in place. And let's add our last one. Uh, if you notice, sometimes the carnations, when you buy them, they're still fairly tight. You can give them a little massage simply by rolling the calyx, which is that fat green part right below the petals, between your thumb and forefinger, and then give them a little massage, and that helps open those petals up. Can't do this with uh, other flowers. Carnations are about the only ones. Uh, they're very forgiving and they're very tough. So you can certainly give them a little massage if needed. So now that I have my flowers in, I can add a bow if I would like. You can stop at this point, uh, but I'm going to add a bow and put that right down here near the base. So we'll set this aside while I show you how to make a bow. I'm going to use number nine ribbon today. Uh, that's going to make a nice size bow there at the base. You can use number three ribbon as well. If you use number three, you just have to uh, put a few more loops on your bow. So I'm going to start by doing a pinch, sort of pleating that up together and having about an inch or so uh, pointing toward my body. I'm going to give this a half twist and then make a small loop. Again, pushing that ribbon up under my thumb and forefinger almost at one point. And that way I have a loop that really stands up. If you just lay the ribbon in there, your bow could be sort of flat and lifeless. And that, we certainly don't want that. So I'm going to keep making loops 
all about the same size, um, rotating back and forth from left to right, and almost a figure eight pattern. I'm going to put three loops on each side today for the bud vase because the bud vase is not very large. As long as you keep squeezing that ribbon in there, your bow is going to be nice and fluffy. There's my third loop on that side and the third loop on this side. I like to put a center loop in, so I'm going to bring that right over my thumb and then curl it back under. And that makes a nice center loop. And then what's left over is sort of streamer. I've cut another short piece that I can now this is about a foot long. I can tuck that under as well. And that extra piece that's a little bit long, we can just cut that off at an angle. And now we need to fasten it together. And this is where a lot of people have a problem making bows. They can get to this point, then they go to secure it by using a little bit of wire. And this is 24 gauge wire. I'm going to slide that under the loop, but on top of my thumb and carefully wrap it around the bow. And on the back side, you want to give it a twist. Now you don't have to twist it all the way down, just about two twists and that bow is not going anywhere. So that is secure. And now we need to put it on a wooden pick so that we can put it into the bud vase. Wooden pick with the wire on the top. I'm going to wrap the wires of the bow around the pick, give it a, again, just a couple of twists. Bend the wires from the bow straight down, and then I'll take the wire on the wooden pick and I'll wrap it around to secure that wire in place. Now the bow looks sort of wonky on the pick. I can straighten that up. Get my streamer straight there. Fluff the bow up a little bit. Give it some life like that. Let's bring our bud vase back in. I'm going to put this down near the base, just inserting that pick down into the bottom. And now our bud vase is ready to go out on delivery. Uh, if you have any questions, certainly leave those in the comments. Uh, and if you like the video, certainly hit the like button there and we'll see you next time.